Welcome, my name is Roman Mekinulov. I'm a principal cellist with the Buffalo Philharmonic, and I will give you some introductions about cello. Cello is one of the oldest instruments in the string family. Um, they started making cellos, as we know, in early 1500s, so 16th century. Um, they used to call it bass violin. As we know, there is violin, viola, then comes cello, and a double bass in the string family, right? Um, I once, when I used to go to school at a college, I used to play on a cello that was made in 1697, more than 300 years old. So that's how old the cellos are. Let's talk about parts of the cello. We'll start with the bow. Bow consists of a screw that tightens the bow, and that's why it's called a bow. If you over tighten the bow, it won't be playing as well. So be very careful not to tighten. But every time you play, you have to tighten the bow. And after you finish, you untighten the bow. This is called a frog. And that frog is where you actually hold the bow. Now you have this hairs here, right? This is actual horse hair from actual horse. It is very important not to touch it with your hands because a little oil from your hands can damage those hairs. Um, how exactly do we play with this bow? Well, you need to invest, and usually it comes with your cellos, um, a thing called rosin. Rosin is um, a material that helps to make the horse hair is sticky. So if it makes it sticky, that would mean there is a lot of friction, right? So before every time I play, I rosin my bow thoroughly. I take the rosin like this, same thing. Never touch the rosin with your fingers because it's very sticky. Then you put it sticky all over your cello. And then I slightly go all over my horse hair to make sure evenly distributed so I get a nice and nice friction when I play. Next part is about holding the bow. It is very important to be able to be relaxed when you hold the bow. So you hold the bow with your left hand, then you gently, gently make your elbow very low and you drop your wrist and just feed the bow in. When you start, clearly you play with a smaller bow, but they're very, very similar, just a smaller size. Um, I want to show you where and how I place my thumb. My thumb is very round, and it goes on a little curb right here. And so it's round, and that's how I play. The middle finger right here, the middle finger of my hand, has to go on the metal ring of the bow. All the fingers have to be on the bow at all times. I see some kids play with the picky up, with this up. No, all fingers on the bow, and then you put it on the string. Let's get back to our actual cello. So cello, as we know, consists of this is a fingerboard and it's called because like this because that's where you play with your fingers uh, we have a bridge bridge uh, function is to hold the four strings there are some fine tuners where you can fine tune your strings uh, to a point and there is just a regular pegs tuners where you can tune the strings but in the bigger spectrum um, you have a scroll. Every cello has a very interesting scroll. This cello is from 1905, so it has a very interesting scroll. Um, you have those little holes. You're going to ask, why are those holes? So that's where the sound actually resonates and comes out. That's, that's where you, hold them, you call them F holes because they look like an, a letter F, both of them. There's another part of the cello called Enpin. And that's an important part. You can shorten it, you can make it bigger, um, and there's a little screw to tighten this. Why this part is important? Because when you're going to start playing cello, 
it's very important to adjust the height of the cello. But we'll touch on this in the next episode. Let's talk about posture and the cello. Number one, uh, you do not sit back all the way in the chair and lie down. So you sit halfway so that you slide, basically slide up. Now, um, the cello has to be hitting about middle chest for you. Um, when you start, obviously you play with the smaller cello and um, uh, later you progress to the full-size cello. Um, to have cello being lined down like this and your head being right next to scroll is not appropriate. And the same thing if your cello is right here. There comes the end pin. You adjust your height according to your current height. How comfortable. So the cello has to be squeezed by your knees and you could be independent behind it. Next step for you would be to invest in tuner or a tuner app on your smartphone. Why is it important? The strings on the cello are tuned. A is your top string, D is your second top string, G is your second bottom string, and C is your bottom string. It is very important that your cello is tuned. Um, the step after that would be to get a basic beginning books. Um, I, I know of two, one called Essential Strings, it's wonderful, other one called Strictly Strings. Um, those books will explain the things in the beginning. The part that you would have to learn is about rhythm. Rhythm is very important. Uh, we have quarters, eighth notes, sixteenth notes, half notes, whole notes. Rhythm is basically will allow you to play in time that is supposed to be. Um, the following step would be plucking. You put the bow away completely and you would be plucking. Um, in music we have a lot of Italian terms and uh, we use the term pizzicato. Pizzicato. That means plucking in Italian. And so in the beginning you would start plucking That's how you would originally learn about positions and basic notes. The following step, the following step would be with the bow. The placement of the bow is very important. You cannot play on a fingerboard, but you can or you cannot also play very close to the bridge because it will produce a quite glassy sound. So the best position for the bow is to stay in the middle between the bridge and the fingerboard, like this. I haven't talked about how much I love cello. I think it is the best instrument of the orchestra, for sure. It's the closest to the human voice. The next step would be to learn how to produce a good sound. I consider that one of the very important qualities. Uh, to produce a good sound, you need to place the bow, like we said, in between fingerboard and the bridge. At the frog, so you hold your bow correctly, make sure everything is rounded, and make sure your arm is very relaxed. And then you pull your bow, make sure there's friction. So if you pull your ball like so, it doesn't produce very good sound, right? So make sure there is enough friction. There comes the rosin. Remember the rosin? Yes. The following step, and probably the final step of the beginning process, would be to put two hands together. The position for the left hand should 
remind you of the letter C. The similar to position of the right hand is the letter C like so. Um, so that will keep you relaxed while you play. And initially, your fingers will hurt because pressing a string, same goes for violin, viola, bass, guitar, anything. The strings will hurt, but you should get used to it fairly quickly. So the final step of beginning process for cello would be to put two together. <sighs> Hope you enjoyed my introduction video and happy learning.